Hello, everybody. What is up? It's OCD Mikey, Hi-Fi Guy, for another edition of The Mikey Show. And this morning, what I want to talk to you all about is this whole flat to 20 thing. A lot of times I get people that contact me and tell me, uh, you know, hey, you know, the speaker goes down, but it goes down to 30 or it goes down to 25 or 20, you know, and they're trying to really just figure out what... Uh, what how low the speaker goes what what what's the useful you know output of a speaker and you know the 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 specifications given by manufacturers many times on their speakers couldn't be less informative it like um and it it, it makes you wonder when you look at different speaker manufacturers and you look at how they give you the spec you can sort of tell who their audience is who they are selling to and it just sort of makes you scratch your head and go, wow, okay, so this these specs really tell me nothing. Um, and again, it just goes right along with hi-fi and how all this kind of stuff is just sunshine or BS or whatever that you're just supposed to just swallow when so much of it really isn't telling you anything. It's a lot of words, but it doesn't tell you a thing in many cases. And so uh, I wanted to show you guys that and make an example and just kind of show you what I'm talking about. Look, if you haven't given me a thumbs up, please give me a thumbs up. If you have not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe to the channel now. It helps me continue to make this content because I know you guys are into it. Otherwise, I have no idea if y'all are into it or not. Um, so please do that for me. Um, I am going to add and share a page here. What I have done here is we are looking at uh, the uh, Dun Duntech company, okay? I chose Duntech on purpose because I know that this is a real accurate speaker. These uh, Dunlavey speakers and Duntechs were used in recording studios lots of times. And so I figured they'd be probably most liable to have useful information. And, um, and I was right, okay? So if we go here, you can see... Uh, the frequency response. Now, typically you'll see a frequency response, you know, like for instance here, it says 45 to 35 kilohertz. Now that really doesn't mean anything to us unless we know <clears throat> plus or minus how many dB and at what frequency, where is it? Okay. So if you just say that the frequency response is 45 hertz to 35 kilohertz, it's unusable. OK, because we have no idea what context that comes in uh, and you need to know the context. Otherwise, you don't know anything. If, it, if you know, pretty much any speaker uh, worth its salt can go down to 20. But I mean, it's like how many dB negative, how many dB? So how, how many dB down is it? Typically, the only useful spec that we're going to have in speaker is going to be negative 3 dB. That's that's any anything below that negative six useless. Negative 12, it's ridiculous. You have to understand from negative three. OK, so imagine um, we've got a flat line. People say flat. OK, and the title of this video is flat from 20 to 20. Um, I'm going to pull this out for a second. Flat from 20 to 20. OK, so here's our line that that means flat. This is the amplitude, right? And anything above the line is, you know, a gain. Anything below the line is a loss or, or a cut. Um, so you've got the perfect line here. When people are saying flat down to 20, that means um, their frequency response doesn't drop off even all the way down to 20. That means it remains constant at the zero line all the way down to 20. I've never seen anything that's flat to 20. It's baloney. Um, first of all, most music does not have 20 hertz in it even. Microphones don't even record 20 hertz. Um, they start at 40 um, most of the time. A Shure SM57, for instance, will start at 40 hertz. That's like one, you use that typically in drums and so forth. Um, so yeah, you may find microphones with different, and, and, and that's a whole nother discussion because microphones have a response curve. So they have dips and peaks and all this shit, okay? And that's a whole nother thing. Um, but getting back to 20 hertz, okay, flat to 20 hertz. There's no way. Um, uh, most speak like if we look here, we go back to the to the Duntech, okay, and we look at the the Senator, okay, which is 
a two-way speaker. Okay, it shows us the frequency response is 45 hertz to 35K. It says plus or minus 1.5. So it's down 1.5 dB at 45. And then the negative 3 dB point is at 42. Okay, so they're being they're being real honest. This is a very honest number. I, I trust this number because of where it's at. I just know from doing this enough, if you're going to give me a 42 hertz um, or, a, or a 45 hertz, on a floor stander, okay, I'm going to trust that you're, that you're giving me the right numbers. If you start giving me 20 hertz on a floor stander like this, no way I'm going to believe you for a second. Um, and then you're never going to tell me what negative dB the 20 hertz is at because it would be something ridiculous, like negative 24 dB or something stupid. It would be so much lower than the rest of the frequencies, you know, the vocals and all that. The, the bass would be so much more negative. Um, so... People don't tell that. You will see many times a lot of the big brands will cloak uh, what their negative 3 dB point is. Typically, that is the significant number. If someone says, well, the speaker goes to 20, well, what's your negative 3 dB point at? You know, And then they need to tell you what's negative 3 dB. That's the only us usable number. Negative 3 dB is half as loud as the zero. So once you drop down 3 dB, you're half as loud. So that means, uh, let's say your negative 3 dB, like this one says, okay, negative 3 dB at 42 hertz. So that means at 42 hertz, he, we're half as loud as at, say, 100 hertz, okay? So, um, or at the, at the, um, at the uh, I've got to, forgot to turn this, put this in airplane mode um, while I do this, these dang videos. Um, anyways, and, and again, I'm not editing. This is like off the cuff, baby. Uh, okay, so um, and then we've got we go to some of the other uh, frequencies here. Well, let's see. Did I finish that? Yeah. So negative three dB from flat is half as loud. As we go down, then we go down to negative six dB would be a fourth as loud as the zero or the flat. Okay. So um, if they're not telling you what the negative D three dB point is, they're hiding something. They don't want you to know how really not low it goes. Everybody trips, all you guys, okay, the end users, all trip about, does it go to 20 hertz? And when people say that, I just realize how uneducated they are. It's like, you know, and and I'm, <laughs> I'm not making fun of you guys, okay? But it is funny for us on our end to hear you guys say 20 hertz. We laugh inside, maybe. I'll, I'll laugh to your face. Um, but Many people will laugh. They'll they'll hide it, okay? Because we know it. There, the twenty hertz is such an unusable spec. It's 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 the only reason twenty hertz is even a thing because it's supposed to be at the bottom of human hearing. They say, oh, humans go from twenty to twenty. If you've ever heard twenty hertz, it sounds like a helicopter landing. That's what twenty hertz sounds like. Um, there's nothing that makes that frequency. A pipe organ may come down into those ranges. Um, but uh, is your speaker going to be able to reproduce that um, very, and, and is the microphone they use to, where's the microphone that they use to record that pipe organ and what was, were, was its limits, okay? So we get into a big, long discussion, but the bottom line is uh, your frequency response is useless unless you know what's the negative 3 dB point. Another good uh, thing to know is what's the resonant frequency of the speaker, what is my resonant on the low end? What's the resonant frequency on the low range? There will be a resonant frequency where your speaker, anything below that. And if you go to look at drivers, you'll see if you find a particular driver, let's say a, you know, an eminence driver or some sort of bass driver, a SEOS or whatever, a scan speak. If you look at the spec of that exact driver, you'll see what a re the resonant frequency. Whatever that fr resonant frequency is, the F naught, the, the F0, you know, maybe FS, um, you'll see in the teal small parameters. Um, whatever that resonant frequency is, okay, so let's say you see a bass driver and you've got a 12-inch driver and its resonant frequency is 45 hertz. Anything under 45 hertz is going to be exceedingly, the, the deeper it goes under 45 is going to get harder and harder for that speaker to produce. It's, it's, it's thumbs up, like its best operation is at its resonant frequency. So typically, the lower the resonant frequency, the better the speaker is for doing bass. 
There is no speaker that has a resonant frequency of 20 hertz. There may be one or two that has a resonant frequency of 20 hertz, and that is going to be like a pro audio 18-inch or 21-inch driver. It's going to be something obnoxious. You're not going to have it in any stuff that we use in Hi-Fi. So I'm going to go into some of these other, other images here or some of these other specs. They got power rating, peak power for 10, um, you know, 500 watts for, for 10. Um, hang on a second here. There was, um, so right here, we get our power rating, peak power for 10 microsecond, 500 watts. Recommended amplifier power. This is the minimum RMS per channel. Look, we've got pulse coherency factor. Okay, so this speaker company tells us the specification for the propagation time error at 3.5 meters, 11.5 feet on the tweeter axis. So it gives us all the information for how they're recording this, less than 10 microseconds. It's given us a pulse uh, a coherency. It's telling us the crossover is a first order, which is 6 dB per octave. Um, Closure type, you know, Cardus, you know, the bi wiring, no, the finish, all that kind of stuff, and the weight and everything. Okay, so it gives us pretty solid um, specification. Like this is pretty deep. This, this, they're not hiding anything. They're telling us how they measured it, under what conditions, that kind of a thing, how far away the microphone was. So we have a context of how to judge these these specifications. Now, let's try another one. Another one that I know trips out on like. Accuracy and phase coherence and all that is Vandersteen. So we go to Vandersteen and we pick the whatever 3A signature. Okay. So we go here and it tells us, look, it tells us about the tweeter. It's exclusive dual chamber transmission line loaded ceramic. Like this goes into exactly what kind of tweeter it is. Goes into exactly what kind of mid-range it is. Goes into exactly describing curved linear polycone, 1.2 layer voice coil, 40 ounce focus gap magnet. Like we're getting a total description. They're not hiding anything, in other words. How I see this is they're not hiding any, any um, shortcomings, right? This is only, I think, an $11,000 speed, $11,400 a pair. And they're not trying to hide anything, okay? When I see companies trying to hide something, I figure their spec is poor, um, or their materials are cheap, and that's why they don't tell. Otherwise, you would you would you'd showcase it like this, like Vandersteen does. Um, you know, phase po positive, recommended amplification, frequency response. Now look at Vandersteen tells us it's 26 hertz to 30k at plus or minus. Okay, so negative 3 dB. So it's negative 3 dB down point is 26 hertz. It's negative 1.5 down point is at 30 hertz. So see, if we went back to the Duntech, if we went, if we got a negative 1.5, it would go even lower. We'd have it down to maybe 40 or 39 hertz. So we could publish, if we wanted to, our negative 1.5 dB point, and you know, we'd get even, we'd get even better uh, with that spec. So this is all about numbers. Um, when I talk to Jeff Rowland, he always refers to it as specsmanship, okay? Because a lot of times, uh, uh, you know, this will give us a context. Now, it doesn't tell us exactly how it sounds per se, but what it does to me is it it, it just, it, it lets us know a little bit more about the company and how they provide their numbers. Uh, Duntech, for instance, is not afraid to put 45 Hertz as their low point. If I sat in the room with a microphone, I could get 30. I could get I could get a reading at 30 for sure. Okay. But I would have to tell you how many dB down for it to make sense, right? For it to be worthwhile. So I think you're picking up what I'm laying down. So we go a little bit more. Six ohms nominal sensitivity is 87 dB at one meter away with the microphone, 2.83 volt input. Uh, you know, it gives us, you know, all the kind of specs. Now we go to um, Fisher & Fisher, which is the brand that I carry. This is the, the uh, Slate speaker. And we get in here, we get the frequency response. The negative three, negative three um, dB point is 24 uh, hertz. Um, and this is, this is kind of a bigger one. This is a 770. Um, let's, let's just not pay attention to actually what the numbers are, but let's just say, because this is a bigger speaker. So if we wanted to be fair, let me go with the smaller, uh, so you guys can see a comparative 
a smaller Fisher and Fisher, not the 770. Let's go with the 570, which would probably be more appropriate for what those other two ones. We go to the technical specification, and what we see here is we've got a data sheet. So they give us a data sheet that we can go right into here. So we've got 28 plus negative 3 dB at 28 hertz. It's 98, 92 dB sensitive. It's got, um, this is all in German, so I can't really tell us. I can't, I can't tell what it says. Oh, here it is. Here's, here's, here's the um, English. Okay, so it tells us frequency, the, 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 the crossovers are first and second order, phase and impedance corrected filter. Tells us about the crossover. Tells us what type it is, the, what type of drivers they are, carbon paper, phone, sandwich membrane. So we're getting, um, you know, materials and it's, it's just kind of telling us a decent amount. But as we're going, as you can see, we're getting kind of a little bit less and less uh, as we go. Now, uh, again, so far, nobody's showed a negative 6 dB point. That would be embarrassing. Um, now we get to Magico and, 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 and look at Magico. Here's the specification for Magico. This is all we get. We get a sensitivity. We get we get diamond coated beryllium. Okay, then we get a Gen 8 mid-range driver. We don't even know the materials. Gen 8, maybe you'd have to research, go deep into the website here to find out what Gen 8 means. Um, 4 ohms, 24. We have no idea. This doesn't tell us negative 3 dB at 24 hertz, negative 6 dB at 24 hertz, negative 1.5. We've got no idea, okay? So it's like... Um, it just tells you a little bit more about the company and who they're selling to and what they want to reveal and what they don't want to reveal, okay? Um, as you know, Magico, Wilson, guys like that, and we'll go to Wilson now. These are the guys that are on my radar, just along with some of those other brands uh, of, of, of electronics that are similar, where I think they just don't really want to tell you much, but they sure have a great marketing arm. So here we're on Wilson, one eight-inch driver. I'll tell us one eight inch driver it doesn't tell us shit about it one eight inch driver one ten inch driver one seven inch driver okay and then we i guess we go over here and then it's what enclosure type rear ported rear vented sealed it doesn't tell us any of the materials we could maybe dig in here and and and, and pull it out if we went in they're probably going to have it in the features and they're going to have a special name for the materials material x or some shit like that right it tells here's the measurements it's it's 90 db one watt it's four ohms um, the frequency response. Okay. So they give us negative three DB, but they say this room average response. Okay. So what this tells me, if this is 19 Hertz, now let's see if this is even the proper, um, I don't even know if this is, I think, I don't think this is the Alexia B. Let me see more of a proper, uh, the proper one would be Sasha would be the proper for what we were looking at before. Okay. So let's go to the spec. We'll go to the spec. And we've got, again, two 8-inch woofers, one 7-inch woofer, one tweeter, rear ported. Okay, 88 dB sensitivity at 4 ohms um, and 82 at 82 hertz. Minimum is 2.36 ohms. So this tells us this is a kind of a hard drive speaker to drive. At 82 hertz, you dip down. This is a reactive load. Um, something like a MagnaPan doesn't even vary from 4 ohms. doesn't matter what you play through it. It goes from 4 ohms to maybe 3.6 ohms. Uh, this goes from four ohms to 2.3 ohms, which is like that, that is a, that is a reactive load. That's tough for an amplifier to push. That's why you need these huge amplifiers to handle this kind of a speaker. Um, frequency response is 20 Hertz to 32 kilohertz. Okay. Negative C again, the fact that they say 20 Hertz, I'm highly suspect of this highly suspect. And then it says negative three DB room average response. So I did a Google search for room average response to see if that is even an, an acoustic term that is used, okay, an industry term. From what I can see, it wasn't. I couldn't find anything. This looks to me, and this is just what uh, from my few, sec few minutes of, of research, was that this is a Wilson term, RAR, that they made up. They came up with a nice acronym for it, RAR, to make it seem all official. And... Um, I, I don't even know what it is. Now, I could dig in their site, try and find out if they explain what RAR is and how they come up with it. They should do that, okay? If they don't, you know, um, then it's even more suspect. But my this is something funky, okay? So RAR 
All I saw when I when I Googled it, it, it is not it, it, it did not I could not find any industry standard term for that. It looks like it's an it's something from Wilson, and we need to know what it is to to determine um, if we measured this. Um, I I'm highly suspect that this thing is only negative down if we take 32. Uh, let, let's say we take a thousand hertz, and we measure a thousand hertz, and then we measure 20 hertz tone. We put a thousand hertz tone, and we put a 20 hertz tone. There's no way that the 20 hertz is only going to be 3 dB down from that 1,000 hertz or that 15 or that 4K. I, I, that's high, highly suspect. They're averaging something, room average response. So they're averaging something. They're figuring the room into it because they're claiming room. So who knows what the hell it is? But to me, it's, it's just more of um, industry smoke screens that are used to confuse us in, in what, it, what it actually means. Um, Look, I have to give it to Wilson. They're beautiful speakers, sure. And if we look at the features, I'm sure the marketing is off the chain. You know, look at that pretty thing, whatever, you know. That's uh, that's their machine that rolls their capacitors, you know. <laughs> I mean, that's not even in the speaker. That is the machine that rolls foil. That's called a roll to roll, to roll uh, toll processing, you know. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, okay, the speaker is cool. Okay. No question. The speaker is cool and they sell off it. They sell off the speaker is cool. They're little acoustic diodes. They're really cool looking shit like this still to this date. One of the coolest looking techie things I've seen. And that's how they sell. Um, it's super cool, but really does, how do we judge if it really, you know, people say, oh, it's got a lot of bass. Oh, you go. And, and then as a buyer, you go to the website and you go and it's like says 20 hertz on here. And then can you expect this thing to really go to 20 hertz? You know, what does RAR mean? So we need to take these things into context. What would really help, what nobody does is a frequency response of the speaker. In an anechoic chamber, I know we don't listen in anechoic chambers. Otherwise, just do it in some sort of a room. If there was some sort of a standard acoustic room that we could use to measure these things in, uh, you know, maybe that's what RAR is. They do an average of everybody's room and they just sort of average it out, you know. Um, but we would need to see, um, we would have to microphone, take a mic. And again, now we're restricted to the microphone's parameters. What is the mic capable of recording? Can it even record 20 hertz? Or is the microphone down 3 dB at 20 hertz? So all this stuff is total, it's, 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 it's jackery really is the bottom line. You can't count on spec most of the time. Uh, it's it's useless information and it's marketing gobbledy, gobbledygook that they use to get you to buy stuff. Um, and um, really, the only thing you can do, listen to the speaker and measure it in your room. You can get a microphone and some software. There's for Mac, it's called Audio Tools. Uh, if Macintosh, I believe it's called Audio Tools. Um, and uh, and there's another one for uh, for any laptop for PC. And you just put a microphone in your room, measure it, just see where it goes, play test tones. Um, I was talking to a very well-known person in hi-fi yesterday, and he was telling me they were listening to the big Wilsons, the giant ones, the $350,000 ones. So I can only guess that's, you know, the Wham or, 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 or Chronosonic or whatever. They were doing test tones, and he was testing at somebody's house, and they went down to 40 hertz. And he said, all of a sudden, the bass totally dropped off. They were doing test tones. So the only way to really know what a speaker will do is to do a measurement in your own room and or look at the specifications written by the company and realize that some companies are going to be a little more uh, forward with their measurements and how they do them. And then other ones will be completely not telling you anything about how they measure the frequency response. So just wanted to take that time to tell you guys a little bit more about speakers and measurements and all that kind of crap. It is very gray area. So thanks for joining. See you.